Hello and welcome to my reflection video. My name is John Fuller and I am currently a candidate for the Masters in Educational Technology at Boise State University. I teach Earth Science and Chemistry at the secondary level. People often ask me, why did you choose a degree in Educational Technology? Well, the simple answer is, I love teaching and I love technology. But the convoluted answer isn't quite so simple. You see, technology is what separates the haves from the have-nots, the achievers from the non-achievers. So by infusing more technology into our instruction, we can hope to motivate more students. We can facilitate the knowledge and skills necessary to help students succeed. To quote a famous saying by Ignacio Estrada, if a child can't learn the way we teach, maybe we should teach the way they learn. And one language I know my students speak is the language of technology. This reflection video will document and showcase some of the things I have learned, the academic abilities, and the artifacts that I have worked on over the past two years. All of my classes in the EdTech program were fantastic. I learned something of value in each and every one of them. Because of the MET program, I now possess the skills and knowledge necessary to develop a site or district technology use plan. I can create engaging websites. I can evaluate the effectiveness of a particular program or unit of instruction. My objectives have become more concise and easier to assess. Images and graphics are now designed with clarity and less ambiguity. My presentations have become easier to interpret and understand for greater efficiency. I can design engaging animations with step-by-step -step explanations. For the next few minutes, I am going to reveal the artifacts that I feel were the most significant and meaningful to me over the past two years. These artifacts and works of instruction reflect who I am and what I got out of the MET program. I truly hope that you enjoy viewing these artifacts because I know I have truly enjoyed creating them. In EdTech 502, I first learned the basics of writing HTML and CSS code. Proficiency in code has allowed me to create educational websites with a professional appearance. However, websites are meaningless unless they are designed in a way that facilitates learning. What this class really taught me was not just how to design websites, but how to make these websites academically engaging by embedding text, video, concept maps, Google Maps, and even grading rubrics. Let's take a look at one such artifact I crafted in EdTech 502. This artifact is a web quest in the life cycle of stars. For design purposes, I worked with a web template to help me design this activity. In this particular web quest, students are required to read up on and research the life cycle of stars through a five-step procedure that involves an introduction, task, research and writing, evaluation, and conclusion. In the introduction section, students are introduced to the topic and several guiding questions. After this, students will begin the task of writing. The task portion of the web quest describes how to go about the research and writing process. Once students are ready, they can begin the research process by clicking on the research link or section of the assignment. Students will spend the majority of the time in the research portion. Here, students can read up on and conduct a thorough investigation on the life cycle of stars by clicking on the various links in videos provided. Once students have investigated the topic, they can reflect upon what they learned by writing the article. The format of the article consists of a heading, introduction, body, and conclusion. Students will then be assessed using a rubric I created that grades them on their ability to research, write, as well as grammar and punctuation. With the emergence of Common Core, students will be expected to research and write to a greater degree. This WebQuest project exemplifies an assignment that allows students the chance to research and write on a particular topic. 
What I loved about EdTech 502 was that it allowed me the chance to design interactive, high-quality educational websites. At the same time, I learned how to format and create effective web-based instruction that my students will utilize for years to come. In EdTech 506, Graphic Design for Learning, we explored the theory behind graphic design and the principles that dictate this field. Once again, I love this course because it allowed me to express my thoughts and ideas on a digital canvas. Graphic images and diagrams are an important way to facilitate the learning process. If not designed properly, these diagrams and images can impede the learning process and how our minds perceive these images. Our culminating project was a website and a unit of instruction that taught students about wind. To be consistent, you will notice similar design principles applied to each graphic throughout the website. Let's examine some of the graphics that I have designed and the justification for their use. This is our culminating project on wind. The first graphic I designed for this project was meant to show the process of heat transfer by means of conduction and convection. For this particular graphic, inactive areas utilize proper white space to bring attention to the text and instructional content. To move the eyes in one direction, the text boxes utilize an element of gradation, where they transition from a warm light blue color to an even lighter shade of blue. In the sea and land breezes diagram, to show contrast, fonts are either white or black so that they stand out and are easy to read. In terms of alignment, everything is properly configured to illustrate symmetry both horizontally and vertically. In the uneven heating graphic, to illustrate solar intensity, I use the transparency effect to show that the sun's rays are more stronger at the equator and more spread out at the poles. Notice the principle of repetition is used on both sides of the equator. In other words, each solar race repeats itself in an identical manner and is also properly aligned. The use of color is also evident down below. Blue and red was used to show both hot and cold temperatures. In my final global wind graphic, aside from the principles previously mentioned, another element of design utilized was proximity. Each text box here is in proper proximity to the associated wind system. Arrows were also used to exaggerate the use of proximity. A key was also used for clarity. In science, one cannot overstate the importance of diagrams to illustrate a complicated or complex process. Before this class, I was designing my own graphics and diagrams in ignorance, not realizing they could have been designed in a way that maximizes learning. As a result of this class, and considering all that I have learned, I have gone back over the past year and modified every graphic in my curriculum so that they are in agreement with design principles such as CARP, contrast, alignment, proximity, and repetition, or color, typography, and white space, to name a few. This way, my students will learn in the most straightforward, clear-cut manner possible when viewing static diagrams and images. A natural progression from static images is to dynamic images. In EdTech 511, we learn how to make our images and diagrams come alive through animations. Moreover, we learn how to use Adobe Flash. Flash is known for its interactivity and ability to immerse students into an enriched multimedia experience. Let's check out one of the artifacts I created for EdTech 511. One of the projects I created in EdTech 511 was on climate and factors that affect climate. This Flash tutorial is more interactive than many types of multimedia because it makes the user engage with the curriculum through a series of steps and animations. For example, if we click on factors that affect climate, the learner will be able to explore how latitude affects climate by clicking on a series of steps that reveal instructive text along with corresponding animations that facilitate the learning process. The learner can also investigate how elevation affects climate by selecting steps one through five.
Finally, the learner can also discover how mountains affect climate by once again clicking on steps one through five. As a result of EdTech 511, I could now make static images like those often found in textbooks and PowerPoint presentations come to life through animations. It is through animations that complex processes and procedures become easier to interpret, especially when they are broken down into simple, uncomplicated steps. I would also like to mention that many of the graphics contained in my classroom presentations have now become animated for greater clarity and understanding. Since EdTech 511, I have also created several simulations and tutorials used in my own class where students interact with and tackle difficult concepts and problems in an engaging, stimulating learning environment. At one time or another, we have all sat through a tedious, pointless presentation that contained too many words, not enough pictures, or some other confusing aspect that left you feeling empty and inadequate. However, I believe multimedia is the future of learning and online learning because if implemented correctly, it is an efficient and deep form of learning. In EdTech 513, we considered research-based principles that govern multimedia. The multimedia principle states that words and graphics are more effective rather than words alone. Other important principles used in multimedia include the contiguity principle and the coherence principle. The contiguity principle places corresponding words and graphics near each other. The coherence principle states that adding interesting material can hurt learning if it is not relevant to the learning objective. In other words, leave out extraneous text, images, or anything else that may be deemed unessential. Let us take a look at one such project I created in EdTech 513 that best illustrates the principles previously mentioned. The artifact I chose to best illustrate these principles is a Google presentation on the sun's life cycle. In this multimedia presentation, the contiguity principle is applied because corresponding text is in close proximity to the image. Finally, only text pertinent to the learning objectives is displayed. Nothing more, nothing less. It was during the first month of EdTech 513 when I realized how verbose and inefficient some of my presentations were. I quickly learned how to create presentations that took into consideration cognitive learning theory, which deals with how our brains are programmed to observe and distinguish key pieces of information. Upon completion of this class, I have since gone back and revamped my multimedia presentations so that they correspond with multimedia principles such as the contiguity and coherence principles. Any future presentations that I create will be consistent with these principles as well. In retrospect, I really can't say enough positive things from the education I have experienced over the past two years. The Master's in Educational Technology program has tremendously impacted the way I deliver and conduct instruction. It has reshaped my thinking towards technology and its role in education and within our own school district. Whether it's through engaging websites, clear-cut diagrams, animations, or even effective multimedia presentations, both me and my students have become enriched in so many ways. One thing I know I can say is that I have worked hard over the prior two years and matured as a professional educator. This ePortfolio and video is both a testament and a superb reflection of this. With that, I bid you farewell and good tidings.